<clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me uh, this morning again uh, for another edition of uh, Coffee with Shane. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but uh, sometimes this feels weird to me to be on here doing video and talking. Um, kind of feels like I'm talking to myself at times. Um, and so that you just have to know that's kind of how my head goes. But uh, I am grateful to be in the word. And, and one of the things that I've experienced has just been a much uh, a meaningful and, and, and a deepening uh, joy and relationship in um, and being here and, and getting to interact and, um, you know, be engaged in the word and and sharing with you guys and, and doing all that stuff. So um, it is good to be here. It is good to see you guys. Good morning, uh, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, today. <clears throat> so um, and as we've been talking about, uh, this will be the last uh, one for this week. And um, my uh, part of what the elders and I are wrestling through is what's what pace, what schedule um, can I keep up and, and those kind of things. And so um, next week we may have a, a, a more limited schedule on our uh, morning uh, times here. Um, we're looking at actually just slowly bringing them back um, down to where where we have a few, you know, we're only doing maybe ultimately maybe one a week um, and, and just trying to maintain, uh, you know, a pattern and a schedule that um, that we can keep up for a long period of time. So anyway, it's great to have you. Looking forward to Psalm 22. Um, really uh, enjoyed the evening last night with Craig online and talking about that text in uh, James. What an amazing, amazing text that was. And, and the time um, for me was really, really rich. I'm looking forward to... Um, uh, to this Sunday as well, as we're uh, continuing in the Gospel of Mark, and we're actually going to be looking at uh, Mark chapter 10, I think starting in verse 32, where um, where Jesus is predicting his death again, and, and the disciples just don't don't seem to get it. And so we're going to we're going to be looking at some of that. What's really cool and, and just amazing to me in God's word and how this works is that in Psalm 22, we're actually going to see David in his despair, in his agony, in his um, suffering and in, in where he's at in his own life, we're actually going to see him uh, prophesy, if you will, or or, or uh, share things about his suffering, his agony, his uh, situation that we see happens directly to Christ in the New Testament. And so we're going to take just a minute and, and look at those things today um, and consider that um, as we consider Psalm 22, which is amazing. And it's a pretty large uh, psalm, so we probably should get going here pretty quick. I do want to um, I do want to share with you that we are we are um, anticipating and excited about getting back to church um, as as we've known it here soon. As far as being able to gather together, uh, the elders and I are watching um, the the we're watching all of the feeds and, and wrestling with when and, and, and how do we do that? Um, at what point? How do we honor the Lord in this time? How do we how do we um, do what's best for for us as a body? Um, and so that's something that we're wrestling with on a regular basis. So um, I hope that um, you would do this for me as well. Um, if something that is happening here that we're doing on a live video feed has been really meaningful to you, um, please feel free to share that with others. Uh, we really don't believe that um, that there's anything. Uh, special about what we're doing um, as far as, uh, you know, God, God didn't come and sit down with the elders and say, hey, you, you have to do this and we want these three things done. We're really just trying to take advantage of the opportunity God's given us to be online and to to be in people's homes that maybe wouldn't ever show up at our church or possibly be able to show up at our church. And so um, if this has been meaningful to you, if anything that we've done has been meaningful to you, Share that with somebody and share with them why. What was it that that was meaningful? Why was this impactful? Why do you think it's worth sharing? Um, make sure you add that personal note because so often, um, you know, if we just click on a button and we share it from our Facebook feed or do something else, uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I could tend to be this way. If I get a bunch of people sharing stuff with me, sometimes I read it, but if I'm busy, I just I'll, I'll pass right over it 
and move on to the next thing. And many, many times I don't go back to those things. Um, so if you do share, be sure to share a personal testimony with the individual. Share with them why it was so meaningful to you, why it's important. Um, and you think that they would find a great blessing or benefit from being there as well. So anyway, that is my plug for the day. Um, I, oh yeah, you guys, you guys will love this. I, um, man, I had a great time. My bride and I were out picking dandelions yesterday, um, out of our yard. Cause we have, we're farming dandelions, I guess I didn't, you know, we, we thought we were trying to raise grass, but turns out we're trying to raise dandelions. Um, anyway, so we were out there doing that last night and it's an interesting thing when, you know, when, when you have this opportunity, I don't know how, I guess I should, I was going to ask you guys this uh, earlier this week, but I didn't. Um, how, how are your marriages? How are your relationships doing? Because um, Sal and I were actually talking about that just this morning, that um, one of the things that's changed for us is that our boys are home more, her and I are home more, and our patterns, the things that we're used to doing, our dialogue patterns, our conversation patterns, our time together patterns, our, our time apart patterns, all of those things, how we deal with life, it's really been disrupted in that particular sense. In fact, they're seeing that at a, at a pretty significant level in within the, the area of um, just from a, a, a domestic violence uh, situation, that's the domestic violence has gone up quite a bit um, during this time of people being at home. And Sally and I were talking about that this morning about how you know, she doesn't have the conversation and the activity that she's used to having at work on a weekly basis. I don't have, um, I still have plenty of conversation, but I don't have some of the quiet time, some of the, some of the, 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 the space where I'm not around family members. I'm not around people, uh, for study that I would normally have. Um, and I've increased the number of times I'm trying to present biblical truth. And so I was finding myself be, being, um, not not upset. She, Sally asked me if I was if I was experiencing extra stress because she was home, and it, it wasn't extra stress, um, but it, I was having a hard time uh, focusing because I was I was worried about other things and not able to really give her specific time and really really listen, really really be available uh, for for her when we were trying to talk. In fact, even just this morning, we, we were talking about this, which was a super important thing. Um, and, and I really wanted to communicate how much I love her and how much I value her and, and treasure her. And yet my, the, the time was clicking away and I was looking at my, I was looking at the clock going, sweetie, I got to go to work because I got to get ready for this thing at 10 o'clock. And so I really don't have time to talk to you because now I'm focused. Anyway, what a crazy, crazy time. And what a, what a, what a great time for us to evaluate our marriages, to evaluate our communication, to evaluate how we love one another, how we're loving um, the people in our home. And, and are, are we really, are we sacrificially loving our, our spouse? Are we sacrificially loving our family and our neighbors? Um, it was just a good reminder to me because in this moment, when things get busy, when, when I have all of these other things to do, what I, I, I can easily defer my selfishness, the side of me that wants to, wants to do what I want to do. I can easily, I can easily take that and I can put on it. I guess it's not really deferring. It's kind of make doing makeup on it, but I can put on that the spiritual um, facade of I've got church stuff to do. I, you know, I've, I need to get ready for this Bible study or I need to get ready for this service or I got to talk to this person. Or I got to help this other individual. And I can very easily disregard my responsibilities at home and my bride's need for me to care for her and to listen to her and be available to her. Um, I don't you know, I, I look at my boys and I'm like, go away, you're adults, figure it out. Um, but but I know I need that. That's kind of a joke. And I mean, kind of it. it I I do really treat them like men and tell them to go figure some of their stuff out. But, um, but it, with my bride, I, I know that I'm, I, it's very easy for me to neglect that, to, to, to drop the ball on that. So anyway, that's been one of the realities that we're experiencing in our home. And I'm just curious how you guys are doing. Um, I, I know that, uh, that the tendency um, in our, in our, our, probably our, our desire is to, not tell people about the messes that are in our home. But I mean, this is just Facebook. It's not like there's a whole bunch of people that can see what you're saying, you know, right? It's pretty private, um, which is why I blab and tell on myself on here almost every every day. It's crazy. 
Um, so anyway, man, be careful with that. Please be aware of that. If if you really are struggling, if there's things going on in your marriage, um, you, if you privately you can reach out to us here at the church, and um, we have people who are uh, who are ready and willing to to counsel, to encourage, uh, to reach out to you, and 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 to you know try and help in that in the family way. Don't do that alone. Don't do not. Um, do not allow this time to create greater divide and and greater um, you know disunity in your home. Take advantage of this opportunity uh, and and let's engage together. So enough about me. Enough about all of this stuff. And uh, let's jump into Psalm twenty two, which we're clearly not going to get very far this morning because I've used ten minutes up worrying about how you guys are doing in your homes and sharing how I've been wrestling and struggling with it again. So uh, Psalm twenty two. Turn in your Bibles and let's begin. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were rescued. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? When you see David and he goes from what we saw in the Psalms uh, yesterday, Psalm 19, Psalm 20, 21, he's extolling the praises of God. He's he's um, he's praising him for all of the wonderful things that he's done. He's looking at the constellations in 19. He's looking at the at the heavens and he go and he's going, that's the God that we serve. And and he's given us his word. And he's done all of these amazing things. And then we see him in, in 22 and he says, ah, where, where are you? Where Why have you forsaken me? How how can I be in this kind of distress? Why aren't you here? Why aren't you rescuing me? We see that that real emotion, that genuine, real life suffering and, and agony that comes in David's life as he's experiencing real difficulty, real hardship, real suffering. And, and he's honest with God and he lays out his heart and he just says, where are you, Lord? I know who you are. My fa- Our fathers trusted in you. You rescued them when they cried out, which was interesting, right? Think about this. When did Israel trust God? It was almost always after some kind of captivity, some kind of tragic, uh, a horrible thing that happened. And then they would cry out to the Lord. But it was almost never when things were going good for them. And so here David is responding to God and he's reminding himself, he's reminding Israel that when things went bad for Israel, they would cry out to the Lord and God would respond to them. And I I, I think that's just, that's amazing and it's incredible and it's important for us to remember that those are the times, it is the times when we cry out to God. And oftentimes we cry out to him when we're in agony, when we're suffering. Um, but, But I think the real genuine relationship, the deep meaningful relationship that we see in Jesus and how he responds to the Lord is that he's in relationship and talking to him when things are good and bad. Like he, he doesn't wait for him just to get rough, but he engages with him all the time. Let's continue. And and this is some of the fun stuff for me because we can actually, we're going to jump into a couple of New New Testament passages because you're going to see that God is right there and that that Jesus is actually living out some of these very, very exact things that David's describing here in his own agony. Uh, Psalm 22, 6 says this, But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make uh, mouths at me. They wag uh, their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. If you open your Bibles to Luke chapter 23, um, verse 35, you'll actually will actually see that this is what's happening to Jesus. So look at Luke uh, 23, verse 35. And so you've got, uh, here's Jesus. Here's here, here he is on the cross, right? And here, here's the response of the people who are, who are crucifying Jesus. Uh, Luke 23, 35. And the people stood by watching, but the ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. So here you see them actually mocking and scoffing at Jesus. 
Wow. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi. <laughs> how, how are you guys? Doing doing good. Just thought we'd come in and disrupt it for just a second. That's Sorry. awesome. Hi, All right. So it became Hello. coffee with Shane, Travis, and Chris. <laughs> All right. Hey, next, you guys have to bring a Bible verse next time. I'll have one this time. No, go away. I said next time. Dang it. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, people. I did not lock my office. I guess I should have. Um, oh, where were we? That was really distracting. We're back in Psalm 22 talking about Jesus and how he was mocked by the leaders, just like David's talking about here in the Psalms. Here Jesus is being mocked just like that. <clears throat> now, as we continue on in Psalm 22, which I got to buzz over there in my Bible again and find it. Don't you guys love allergy season? <clears throat> I don't know what it is, but it just it must be as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm more susceptible to them. Um, verse 8 of Psalm 22. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet, this I love how David goes back to this, right? David goes back to who God is, even though he's suffering, even though right now he's he's experiencing, he's being mocked and he's experiencing all of this stuff. He goes back to who the character of God is yet. You are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust in you at my mother's breasts. Oh, on you was I uh, cast from my birth and from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Be not far from me for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a raving and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax that melts within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potter shard, uh, um, like a pot shard, and my tongue uh, sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. And he continues. Um, uh, for, for dogs encompass me and accompany me, evil doers and circles me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothes, they cast lots. And did any of that pop out? Did any of that remind you of what Jesus went through? It should. Absolutely. Right. Um, if we go in, in what I'm doing, you guys need to know I'm, I'm using um, what uh, this Jesus-centered Bible that I got, and I, I absolutely love this thing. Um, the blue letter—it's this is all the Old Testament, and the blue letters right here actually are um, references where the Old Testament in the passage speaks of um, what Jesus is experiencing in the New Testament, and so it's actually right here in this Bible. It's called the Jesus-centered Bible. And it does that for all of the Old Testament. It's one of the tools that I love. It's actually, this is the Bible that we give out to all of our, all of our high school graduates at the church. Um, because we're, I, I personally, I want to attach them. I want to tie them to the Old Testament and the beauty of the Old Testament and how the character of God and the, the provision of Christ was always, always part of God's plan. And it's all throughout the Old Testament. And, it, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. But if you jump in there, you can actually just look at that passage and it tells us to go to John chapter 19. So let's buzz over to John chapter 19. And if I'm going too fast, you guys, I really apologize. Um, I don't mean to. It just, it happens. I get excited about this stuff and it starts just rolling off my tongue. So I apologize. Um, John chapter 19. Let's look at verse 23. John 19, 23, when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven uh, in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says they divided my garments among them and for my clothes, they cast lots. The very psalm that we're reading this morning in Psalm 22 is referenced in the gospel of John as being a prophecy about the coming, the, the Messiah that's going to be crucified and his bones being disjointed and everybody turning against him and, and him being crushed under the pressure, his, the, the nails in his hands and his feet. I mean, crucifixion wasn't even a thing back at this point in time when David wrote this. What an amazing, amazing picture. 
And here David is experiencing this brutal aspect of life, the, this difficulty, this hardship. He's, he's being pursued uh, to for his death. I mean, this was at the time when Saul was pursuing him. Um, it possibly, actually, I don't. I'm, I'm really not sure. I didn't actually see in the in the title on that particular psalm what the time frame was, but we know that David spent much of his uh, early kingship either running from Saul or or fighting the Philistines or in in some kind of conflict, and that's what we're seeing in Psalms. And he's crying out to the Lord, crying for God to show up and respond. And I think it's interesting. Farther down, we won't, I don't have time to get in it today into it this morning, but farther down in there, it actually talks about how the Lord heard His servant, how He heard him, uh, His cries and His petitions as He cried out. And we know from Hebrews that God did hear Jesus and His requests, and 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 He was heard because of His fervent requests. But the passage says in Hebrews that He learned obedience through His suffering. Uh, so here Jesus and here's David crying out and, and Jesus does the same thing. And part of what God does is he takes him through these difficult times for his own purposes. Isn't it crazy? I mean, it, it, it almost is bothersome to me. It's hard for me sometimes to really put my head around that David suffered all that he did, partly, I believe, so that he could write what he wrote and it would point to Christ. And in God's sovereignty, he knew these things and he and he allowed some of this stuff to happen just to put him in that spot so that he could be part of the prophetic hope of the world, of all, all of creation. And um, I just wonder sometimes if God isn't allowing us to go through stuff in our own lives so that we'll be at a spot where we can care for others down the road. People we don't even know, people we don't even have a con, we, we don't even have a clue about. We're not, we have no concept of the possibility of even helping these people or being available to help someone else because of what we're going through. I, I, I wrestle with that and I, I believe it's true. I don't, I don't, know how God's going to use all of my messes and all of the times that he's rescued me and the times where I've where I've cried out to him because of my own desperation to be rid of my sin or to be to be freed from whatever it is that that I'm that I'm suffering in um what I call suffering I mean I get it where I don't know that I've ever really suffered um not for the sake of the cross anyway I mean I, I think way too often I've suffered from my own ignorance, not not because of not because of being such a faithful servant of God and 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 having to stand for the gospel. So anyway, uh, you guys, I, I know we're wrapping this up and, and there's so much more in Psalm 22. I really want to encourage you to dig in there and keep reading. Please don't stop. Don't stop doing this. Do not put this time aside. If you've made the time to be here, continue to do so. Um, and I really want to encourage you, uh, take somebody else with you. Um, many of us, as as I'm as I look at the names of people that are on here, um, many of you are are a little bit more mature in your life than others, and I want to encourage you find a way to take somebody else with you through this process. Um, discipleship is about us engaging the Word of God and doing that with somebody else and and walking with them through the realities of what it means to follow the Lord. And so, would you would you do that with me? Help help that to be a reality. Um. And, and let's continue to see what God's doing. I, I want you to know part of the reason that we're that we're really looking at back in some of the, the online stuff down is that we're actually watching the numbers trend um, down quite a bit. Um, mostly, I think, because people are kind of starting to either get comfortable with being in there where they're at or they've found a new pattern of life that is the, where they're not being online here. They're not um, engaging with this stuff as much. Um, and I think by, by the grace of God, some people are, are actually going back to work and, and, and we're slowly starting to re-engage in their life. So very, very excited about that. I, I would um, you know, I'm really hopeful that that's where we go and that that's what happens. Um, but I'm also just so deeply uh, appreciative of the opportunity to be here and to talk with you about the Lord and and for you guys to put up with me um, as I as I stumble through all this stuff and um, just talk about the Word and it's it is my um, how, how it's really become a great passion for me um, 
and and uh, uh, one of the driving forces in my life to be in the Word of God and to be to be learning from it, not not just to talk about it, but to have it actually change how I live, to to change and and to affect me. And so, when we think about Psalm twenty two this morning, we think about how David's responding to life. I want to encourage you this morning to be honest with God. He already knows what you're thinking. You're not you're not fooling him. So let's just be honest with him. If if we're in pain, if this is if we're suffering, if we if we don't like where we're at, then let's cry out. Let's 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 give him that reality of what our hearts are really saying. Again, not because he needs to know it, but because you and I need to be aware of where our hearts are at. And so I think we need to be honest with him and tell him where we're at. Tell him how we feel about this stuff. But don't forget to go back and remember who he is. Right? David goes back and he says, "Yet Yes, this is how I feel yet. You are the God that that rescued Israel from Egypt. You are the God that rescued Israel from from the land, the giants in the land. You are the God that took us out of captivity in Assyria. You are the God that took us out of captivity from Babylon and from the Persians. You're the God that brought Jesus down to earth and, and provided a solution to my heart issue, to my sin issue. That's the God that knows our hearts that we're crying out to. That's the God of Psalm 22 that David is saying, Lord, where are you? Yet I know who you are. And because of that, I will trust you this morning. Because of that, I will hope in you. I hope you, th this is encouraging to you guys. I hope that this is an a, a time that is valuable. And um, my, my prayer is that as we go forward and we do this particular thing less, you will have found a great, meaningful, deep, uh, deeply transforming experience of being in the Word of God every morning, um, and, and and maybe maybe this is something that you guys that we as the body need to do together, where where we get on the phone with, with one another, maybe, and we read through the text, or or some of you have opportunity to meet in the mornings and and to gather with other couples and and to read the Word of God and to spend that time sharpening our 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 our, our spiritual walk with God by being in the Word together. I hope that's what God's doing. That's my prayer um, and my passion that that whatever we do here would spark greater and, and more wonderful things in each and in every individual life as you go and make disciples, um, as I'm trying to go and make disciples, as we do this together so that the kingdom of God will be furthered. Uh, will will be will be moved along in, in, in our community and will grow and and we'll see one more in heaven. Whatever it takes. Um, that's my hope. That's my prayer. That's why we keep doing this. Um, so I hope it's been good. I hope that there's uh, you, you have you have experienced some encouragement this morning. Keep your eyes on the Lord, and may He bless you as you pursue Him today and and give Him the glory for all that He's doing. And um, remember to be honest. He already knows your heart. You might as well just deal with it. God bless. Talk to you later. Bye.